All right, so this video is actually like a part two to the video that I just did a couple of days ago, and I'll click the little card for the link up that way somewhere. Um, so you can check it out, but basically we're 0411 swapping this 99K2500 Suburban. Uh, in a nutshell, an 0411 swap is more or less where you take the stock black box computer and you completely repin the harness so it will accept and plug into an 0411 PCM, which is a later model computer that ran, you know, LS cars, some trucks, and a variety of other vehicles. But basically, it's a better computer, it's faster on the inside, it has a faster processor, um, and there's more tuning options. Both EFI Live and HP tuners can actually modify this PCM. So today, what we're going to be handling is just that, the tuning process. Now, there, ne there never was from the factory a vehicle that had a 7.4 liter big block that ran on an 0411 PCM, but 2001 to 2002 Chevy Express vans came with a 5.7 L31, which was virtually identical in terms of sensors and electronics to the L29 7.4454. So that's why, or that's where we're going to start rather. We're gonna find an 01 or an 02 Express L31 tune file, and we're gonna work with that and modify it to actually be able to run this Suburban. And we might have to make a few tweaks. Maybe we'll borrow like parts of a VE table from an 8.1, things like that. But I'll just show you all the steps that we're gonna take. Before I get to tuning, the very first thing that I'm actually going to do is just read the stock tune file off of this 0411 computer, mainly because I'm just kind of curious as to what this computer was in before it came to me. Because, you know, these computers, the 0411, they used them in a couple dozen different vehicles, you know, Camaros, Firebirds, some trucks, some SUVs. So really, it's just curiosity at this point, but it's also a good idea just to kind of save any sort of tune file that you come across just in case you need to reference maybe some injector data down the road or a math table or something like that. So anyway, I'm going to grab the laptop and we'll yank the tune off of here. All right, so here's kind of how it all hooks up. You've got the OBD2 port underneath the dashboard and that plugs into the cord which goes down here to the little uh, HP tuners interface brick thing. Uh, the other end of that plugs into the computer with a USB just like you expect it would. So I'll just kind of walk you through the steps of reading the tune off. It's pretty simple. The first thing, you just got to open up the HP Tuner software. Click the button and hit read. And hopefully if I wired everything up properly, this will work. Oh, I didn't turn the key on, so obviously it will not work. All right, we'll have to endure that annoying beep that GM is famous for. So one more time, click the read vehicle button, click read and Oh, there we go. It is reading. So right away it tells me that, let's see. Oh, it was a 2001 Chevy Tahoe that this came out of. Um, 5.3, so basically just your standard SUV or truck calibration is probably on here. All right, so I came in the house just because I got a little bit of work to do. It's a little bit warmer and I got the laptop charging up, so it'll have plenty of juice whenever I go to reflash this thing. Now, I've done a lot of research on this swap and I've downloaded a bunch of different tune files that I'm going to need to kind of piece together this 0411 454 swap. Because remember, there was no stock calibration file out there that ran a 7.4 Vortec on an 0411 PCM. At least not that I have found for that matter. You might be able to find like one of those L21 7.4s but I haven't found a tune file for one of those yet. So anyway, uh, this is how we're going to have to make this work. So you can download a stock file, and I've got one right here for a 2002 Chevy Express with the L31. That's the 5.7350. And this tune file right here is kind of what everything is based off of and how this is all going to work. Uh, because this file here is what contains the operating system that will work with the four tooth crank wheel. Because remember the LS trucks, like the Tahoe that this computer came from, have a 24 tooth reluctor wheel and a one tooth crank wheel. Where the L29, L31 have a four tooth crank wheel, which is totally incompatible with the two operating systems. So anyway, the first major thing that we need to flash, which is all gonna kind of go together, is the proper operating system. And that's what this tune file here is built from. You know, you've got things like, you can come to airflow and your VE table right here. This is one of the most important parts to modeling how your truck is going to run, is making sure the VE table is correct. Probably the next most important thing uh, is the mass airflow, and that is under 
right here, mass airflow versus frequency. Now, this sensor I don't believe is going to change from an L31 to an L29, but the VE table definitely is. So I did a little bit more digging and we'll close this one right here. I found someone had made a tune for a L29 with a 0411 swap. So this is probably the tune that I'm gonna start from, but there still are a couple things that I need to double check and some things that I'm probably gonna to have to tweak. Okay, so I have the stock black box tune file pulled up right here. And then I also have the 0411 swap 7.4 tune that I found pulled up right over, not there, boom, right over here. And I just wanna do a quick visual comparison between the two tunes. Now you can't just copy and paste the data from one to the other because the tables have different ranges and they look pretty different. But visually there are some tools in here that you can use just to kind of compare the two to make sure you're running sort of in the right direction. So I'll start with the stock black box tune file right here. And you've got RPM on the top, load on the side. And the values in here are, looks like we have a, the lowest end of about 11. And on the high end, we've got kind of 28, 20, or 20, 26, 27, 28, kind of in this area here. And these high ranges, this is where the engine's gonna be making its peak torque. And this is more or less a model of, like I said, the airflow that the engine draws in. So we'll kind of look at this at this three quarter view here and I'll compare that to the VE table on the 0411 swap tune that I found. Now, right away, you can see this table has a lot more data in it than the other one did. And if you look at the values, you'll notice that they're different. So the other table from the black box, remember had a value of 11 here. And this one is a decimal, but it's a value of 36. Uh, the highest values, it looks like they are still in the 3600 and the 4000 RPM column. So let's see, 36, 4000, they have some of the highest values down to 3200. That one's pretty high too. Um, so, so far it looks like the table, even though the values are totally different and this, the scaling of the table is off, the values look like they are pretty correct. I look at it from this one three quarter view here. You notice at the low RPM ranges, there's a pretty sharp drop off and that's actually shared between the VE table on both. And if you just compare the two side by side, more or less the VE table looks close. So like I said, this is a good educated guess. We're gonna go with this tune file that I found in terms of the VE, but let's keep on looking and see what else we're gonna have to change. I wanna look at the spark tables real quick just to kind of make sure that we're in the ballpark there. So let's see, this is the 411 tune that we're working with. I'll close that guy. Let's pull up the spark table, high octane spark, and then I'll go over to the stock black box table, do the same thing. Spark. Da, 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 da. Now the other difference between these two is the black box tune. It only has one spark table. It doesn't have a high and a low octane one like the 0411 tune will. Okay, so we get the spark table for the 7.4 black box tune. Uh, let's make a graph so we can kind of compare the two, one to the other. So another difference I noticed real quick here is the 0411 computer actually uses cylinder air mass as measured in grams per cylinder, where the black box actually still uses manifold pressure to do the spark. But uh, a similar shape, it looks like the values, let's see this guy down here, the 411 tune, about 15 degrees max, where this one has about 12. So I might tweak that, I might pull a little bit out, but for now at least it looks like, again, I'm just making sure that we're in the ballpark here to get a good starting point. I have heard people say you can actually just stock 8.1 timing table, and that's what this one actually might be. Uh, they said it runs a little bit smoother. The next thing that we need to look at is the injector data. Now, if you go into this little tab here, calibration details, the guy that built this tune and posted it onto the HP Tuners repository, which by the way is a great resource if you're ever looking for a base tune to start from, there's a lot that are posted up there. Uh, but anyway, he mentions down here that it has 2002 LS1 28 pound per hour injector tables or injector data in it. And that's not gonna work for my engine because this engine has 22 pound per hour injectors. But luckily I did find another tune file right here that has some 19 or sorry, 22 pound per hour injector data in it. And the reason I keep going back and forth between 19 and 22 pound per hour is because some injectors are rated at 43 PSI and some are rated at 58 PSI. And that's just the difference. It's the same injector. It's just at a different uh, pressure. It has a different flow rating. So anyway, 
Uh, we'll go down here, fuel uh, injector flow rate versus KPA, and we'll just grab this table right here, 22.6, copy that, boom. Come over to, I'm getting confused here. Uh, da, da, da. I think this one, yeah, four limb swap. So we'll come over to this guy here and we will go to the fuel flow rate versus KPA. And yeah, so this one has 28 pound injectors in and we're simply gonna paste in the 22.6 factor from the smaller injectors. And we'll do the same thing with these other tables uh, versus the voltage offset, that's at one. Uh, minimum injector pulse, and just a few other odds and ends. So the other nice thing about HP tuners is it kind of helps you keep track of what you've changed and what you haven't. Uh, so this little red here, that means I've changed something inside this table and I haven't saved it yet. But I can also use the compare function to open up this other file I have. Let's see, desktop. 19-pound uh, injector data, and it'll actually show you where the differences are and things that you might want to look at changing if you're copying from one to the other. So even though I changed flow rate versus KPA, that's probably the biggest thing on the injectors that we want to look out for. These other one, two, three, four tables are also different, so I'm just going to copy over that data from one to the other, and that way I just have all the most up-to-date correct information so the engine will deliver the exact amount of fuel that it's supposed to. Minimum injector pulse, simply copy that. Go back to the main file and paste, simple as that. Close this one and it turns red to know that we've changed it. Default injector pulse, that's the difference between the two. Show compare, copy, show main, paste, boom, changed. Offset is another good one to check. Select everything, copy, main file, paste. So from here on out, I think we've got most of the major things, you know, figured out that we're going to need to make this thing run properly, but there's just a few more I'm going to check, you know, tire size, gear ratio, things like that. And there's a few codes that I need to make sure that are turned off for this operation to work properly. So let's jump right into the speedometer tab and see what we've got. All right, so this truck had 456 gears in it. That's an easy one to change. Uh, my truck just has 410, so that's just an easy type and replace. Now these other two parameters that we've got, trans revolution per mile and then vehicle speed sensor pulses per mile, you actually need to calculate these two. Uh, and it's pretty simple. I made a little spreadsheet that'll just do the math for you, but basically you just need to know your tire rotations per mile, which you can find on like Tire Rack or something like that, and just do a little bit of math. So with my tire size, this guy right here, this works out to be 2,689.600, and vehicle speed sensor pulses per mile is basically just this value times how many teeth are on the vehicle speed sensor, and that one works out to be 107,584, boom. So that'll correct the speedometer, and so that thing will read properly. See, there's no speed limiter set at 140. The truck will never see 140 miles an hour, I'm sure. By airflow, electronic throttle control. This doesn't have electronic throttle control, but we'll raise these just in case. So let's say 201 and... 198. So one more thing to keep in mind, whenever you install the 0411 in a truck like this, one of the things that you have an option to wire for is the park reverse neutral drive indicator. Now there's a switch down on the transmission and in some applications that switch will go directly up to the PCM so it'll know which gear it's in. Now, uh, it's actually optional if you have HP Tuner software to wire that up. I actually chose not to wire it up because that's four more circuits that I'd have to run. I need them to take wires down from the transmission or from the back of the instrument cluster and run them through the wiring harness and up to the computer. Now, this will actually work without those because when I wired up the PCM, there's actually some wires from the pressure switches inside the transmission which will report the same information, but we just need to let the computer know where to expect that information from, whether it's externally hardwired from a switch or whether it's from the internal uh, pressure switches on the transmission. So we come in here to the transmission tab, 
uh, right here, general configuration, PRNDL equipped. We'll just click none there. So that'll solve that problem and prevent me from having to run four more wires. Next, there's just a couple of things that we need to make sure. Number one, that there's no anti-theft because that apparently won't work between the two. And there's an alternator code that we need to disable as well. So we'll come to the system tab, that's control, that's a vehicle anti-theft system. Make sure that says none, it already does. We're good to go there. All right, so it looks like there's these two codes that are already disabled. That's just right here where it says no error reported. Uh, so generator L terminal circuit, generator F terminal circuit, those are both disabled, so we should be good to go there. All right, so I think we're just about ready to go out to the truck and flash this in and cross our fingers. Hopefully it starts up on the first try, which if everything's wired properly and tuned properly, it, it'll fire right up. Uh, but just in summary, here's kind of a list of all the things that I checked or made sure were spot on for this combination. Uh, had to get rid of the anti-theft, had to get rid of the alternator codes. Uh, make sure that you either have wired in your park reverse neutral drive switch or you disable that in the tune. Uh, and for what it's worth, I'm not sure if EFI Live can allow you to disable that, but I know HP tuners can. Um, make sure things like the VE table and the spark tables make sense for your application. If you're doing an 0411 swap on an L31 truck, just use whatever you find in a base uh, express tune because that's stock, it's already figured out. But in my application, I just had to make sure it made sense because we have the bigger 454 engine. Um, also the injectors, make sure those correlate to what you have. Uh, and then the gear and tire size, that's kind of the last thing to make sure that the differential ratio, the tire revolutions per mile and all that is appropriate. So your speedometer will read correctly and the transmission will shift when it should. So everything checks out, I believe. So I'm gonna go to the truck, we'll flash it and hopefully, hopefully we're in business. All right, so we're back out in the garage. I've got everything plugged up and connected and we should be ready to get this thing flashed. Um, now, be prepared, you're going to have to spend a couple bucks for credits because both the file that you find and the computer that you're going to be flashing are going to cost you two credits. So that's a total of like 200 bucks through HP Tuners, but that's just part of the price you have to pay if you want to do a conversion like this. Uh, in some cases, you might be able to find an ECM that's pre-programmed that you can buy from someone who does tuning stuff like this. Uh, but let's get to it. So fuel pump cycles, that's good. Okay, so it starts up, it runs. Seems to be idling, I guess for the most part, it sounds a little bit lower than usual, but give it some quick gas here. Not bad, I mean, it kind of sounds like it has a slight miss. I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, Check engine light just popped up. I'll look and see what that's all about. But so far, hey, at least it runs. That's, that's a step in the right direction. So what I'm gonna do now is just use the VCM scanner to basically see what that check engine light is all about. And maybe that'll shed some light on what's going on here. Check engine light button here, read DTCs. Okay, there's a generator code. I didn't do a range switch. Okay, that's probably normal because I don't have that little switch thing. Engine coolant temp sensor, that one, that could be a wiring problem. So I'll have to dig into that. All right, so just a quick recap because I'm not exactly sure what I said on camera and what I didn't. Uh, I did a right entire process. Everything seemed to go fine. We didn't brick anything. Uh, started the truck up and it ran, which is a major step in the right direction, but it didn't run exactly as smooth as it did before. Uh, I had a check engine light and there was three codes for it. One of them was for an alternator or a generator circuit. That's no big deal at all because that's just something I forgot to turn off when I did the tune. Uh, the second code is for a coolant temperature sensor. And that's probably the reason why it's dumping a lot of fuel because it 
probably thinks it's a little bit too warm. And the third code was our transmission range switch. So I'm not entirely sure if that's something that the uh, calibration could disable. We talked about those four wires not being there. So I'm not sure if it's part of that or if it's for one of the internal switches inside the transmission because when I checked the spreadsheet, um, it matched up. The pink wire is exactly where it should be. But so for the coolant temperature switch or the sensor, that was a mess up on my part. There's actually two wires. There's a yellow wire and a brown wire right there. So those two side by side, yellow and brown to the left of it. I actually have those in the wrong position. The brown wire is supplying voltage into the pin where it should be receiving a sensor signal from the coolant temp sensor. So all I got to do is swap those two around and that should cure the coolant temp sensor code. I'll start it up again and I'll probably make it run a little bit better too. Uh, and then all I got to do from there is figure out the transmission thing, but I'll take care of this wiring first and we'll go from there. All right, so I swapped around the two wires that I had mixed up, started it up again, cleared the codes, and so far it seems to be running a little bit smoother. It doesn't seem to be missing kind of like it did. It doesn't smell way too rich out the tailpipe. Kind of come back here and just listen to it, see what it sounds like. I mean, for the most part, it kind of sounds like it did, but the real trick, let's come over to the scan tool. I've had it running for a couple minutes now. We're up to 167 degrees. Um, Let's check the DTCs. Boom. Read codes. All right, right there. No DTCs detected. I think that means we have success. So now the next step is just to get the truck out on the road and drive it. And for me, that'll actually happen tomorrow morning because it's like almost six o'clock. But for you, that'll be just a second. So let's go for a drive. driving around with the 0411 swapped 454. So far I gotta say so good. I'm happy with how this thing turned out. I can't really say right off the bat I noticed any significant performance improvement, but I didn't really expect that. I mean, all the tuning that we did today, none of it is like a high performance quote unquote tune. All I'm doing, or all I did, was just basically install a stock calibration into this computer. So I'll definitely have to play around with it and refine it a little bit more if I want to maybe advance the timing a little bit, lean it out a little under PE conditions, and try, try to get a little bit more power, maybe improve the shift points to my liking. But for the most part, I'm happy. Um, one thing I did show you, I actually did go in and swap over the shift points from the uh, stock black box computer. Now that's actually one area of the tune that is directly copy and paste. So I just copied the shift points from the black box into the 0411. Um, I think shift's great. Hey, I, the only problem I do have is it's flashing a check engine light, which means it's a P300 random misfire code. And I know exactly what's going on is because the crank relearn hasn't been done yet. Now, I went through the same exact thing when I swapped the 8.1 into the truck that had the 5.3. Uh, I tried about a, a million times to use HP tuners to get it to kick off a crank relearn procedure, and I just could never get it to work. And I did the same thing here. I tried HP tuners to do the crank relearn a whole bunch, and just it would never take. So I don't know what's going on. Last time, I just had to go find somebody who had an actual scan tool and you know do that crank relearn procedure. And I'll do the same thing here. But other than that, things running smoothly, and you know. Probably one future upload, I'll show you how I'm going to dial this thing a little bit more to get some more power and more spunk out of it. But like I said, so far, so good. We are in business. Now, thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate you, each and every one of you. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys on the next upload. 
All right, guys, just one little footnote because I couldn't leave everything undone like that with the crank relearn. Um, in the background, there was that code 706, and that was for a transmission range position switch. And that one was kind of, you know, bugging me. I, I couldn't figure it out because I had the tune set for no PRNDL, so it shouldn't be expecting that code. Now, I could just go in the HP tuners and disable that code so it doesn't throw. But anyway, because it was there, that's what was preventing me from doing a crank relearn process because the computer needs to know that the truck is in park before it will allow that to happen. So anyway, I found a quick workaround on the computer here. If you ground uh, pins number 32 and 34, I believe, on the C1 connector. So I got these two little jumper wires in there. I just twisted them together and added a jumper to the little bracket down there. It grounded it out and evidently that's enough to let the computer know that the truck is in park and then it enables the function for the crank relearn. So I did that, the crank relearn took just fine using HP tuners and then I went back out on the road for a quick test drive just because I wanted to verify that the random misfire code did not return. And it didn't, so I went for you know a 10 or 15 mile drive, that's the longest trip that I've taken after I completed the 0411 swap. And luckily the uh, random misfire code did not come back. So I was like, man, this is good. We're headed in the right direction. So I came back here and then I scanned for codes once again, because I was just curious about that range position, the, you know, the 706 code. And weirdly enough, it did not come back. Now, I don't know if that's just a fluke. I don't know if after completing the crank relearn that somehow tricked something. Um, I don't know if the PRNDL flag in the tune, I, I mean, I don't know what's going on. I can't explain that. But after that 15 or 20 mile drive, everything worked perfectly, no codes and the thing drives perfectly. The computer also knows what gear it's in because I can log that on the scanner. It shows when it shifts, what gear it's in and everything like that. So anyway, I'm rambling a little bit at this point, but we've got a successfully completed 0411 swap. The truck runs great, it drives great. Um, we haven't really tweaked the tune for high performance stuff. I'll probably spend a little bit of time doing that at some point. Uh, but anyway, successful job. Thanks for watching guys, you're the best.